What is up, guys? There's this new paintball gun out for Mac Dev called the Prime. Let's talk about it. Prime is Mac Dev's new flagship spool valve gun, a follow-up to the Clone 5. The Prime, for the most part, is a whole new paintball gun. They've changed the bolt, the solenoid, the board, uh, the trigger, the on-off, yeah, that stuff. For, for the most part, yeah, a whole new paintball gun. It still has the same regulator, uh, barrel, feed neck, uh, minor things. So you're thinking about buying a Prime, what do you actually get when you buy one? You're getting that new MacDev red hard case, which I actually really like in that red color. It's gonna hold all your bits that it comes with. Comes with O-ring kit, you're getting obviously O-rings, some spare screws, ball detents, reg seat, grease, you gotta have grease. Uh, you need that to make the paintball gun work. And barrel cover? I think all these guns come with barrel covers. Yeah, you get a barrel cover, big deal. Allen wrenches, actually Allen wrenches that I like a lot. Uh, they come with those ball end wrenches, big fan of those. The Shift 2 barrel kit, you're gonna get a 685 insert, 693 insert, and the barrel tip that's gonna end up making the Shift 2 kit 14 inches. That'll come out of there eventually. Ooh, there we go, there's the barrel back. Barrel back. You get a manual, uh, yeah, manual, tell you that, just velocity, uh, basic troubleshooting stuff, and prime, finally. Yep, there's your prime. There's your new paintball gun. So let's get like some little teeny feature stuff out of the way and then get to the meat of this review thing. All the Mac Dev guns for the past couple years, at least the high-end guns, have all been coming with that color OLED screen. It looks really nice, it's super clear, Big fan of the colors. It just kind of makes stuff a little bit easier to pick out rather than just having like that monochrome or just like that one colored screen. I really like it. Screen's really nice. Still comes with lever feed neck. Uh, it works really nice. Uh, it's a lever feed neck. It works. They've also switched up the on off. They're no longer having that twist knob on off. They're going to that lever system, uh, which works well. The previous Mac Dev on offs had a few issues. So it's good to see that change going to that lever system. Kind of like the Vanquish is doing uh, the dangerous power guns. That's all that can come to mind. Lever on off, improvement. So picking up the Prime right away, you know it's a Mac Dev gun. It still has that same feel and those same ergonomics, like the same length as the clone did or the Cyborg 6, has that very familiar Mac Dev feel. I really like that. I like the way the Prime feels. I like the way the clone felt and I like the way the Cyborg 6 felt. I like that length. I think it's like the perfect mix of like length and shortness. Maybe not length and shortness, maybe just like length. One of the things that I've liked about the newer Mac Dev guns, the Prime included, is the distance between like the trigger and the back of the trigger frame. So like that distance right there where your hand's actually going. It's a little bit longer, that distance is a little bit longer than like other paintball guns. So it just feels good when I hold it. Although I do have big hands, probably bigger than most. So some of you guys might find that the trigger area is a little bit too big. Uh, but ergonomically, I like that feel. That whole feeling, ergonomics, that length and then that trigger distance, it's kind of all preference. So it's hard to say that like ergonomics, oh, they're the best. Because it really is to each his own, right? You might like it, I might hate it. It's really just kind of a preference thing. MacDev have also gotten a lot of flack over the fore grip and the trigger frame grips. We've just gotten really used to all this rubber on these paintball guns. Like take for instance the Planet Eclipse CS 1.5 and the Die DSR. Both of those use very soft rubber on the trigger frame and fore grip. So really all the contact points your hands are making are on soft rubber. And then MacDev have gone like the other route with the Prime. It still has that like rubberish kind of like fore grip and trigger frame area, but it's really really hard. The grips are rubber, but like if you didn't really pay attention, you'd just think they were hard plastic. I don't think that's a problem though, because over the course of me playing with it, it's not like my hands were slipping around or anything. So yeah, it's not soft, soft rubber like you'd find on like that DSR or CS 1.5, but it didn't really matter. My hands weren't moving around. MacDev have also made the grips kind of like sit inside the trigger frame a little bit to kind of like help eliminate paint or water from getting into the frame. So you have like a little lip on the outside of the trigger frame, and then the grips kind of like sit inside that lip to try to like eliminate, yeah, water and paint from getting in. And then they kind of snap into place. There's a very satisfying click and like snap when the grips are actually in place. Listen to it. Yeah, the grips aren't soft rubber, which is definitely a departure from all the other high-end guns. So it's a little bit weird and people don't like it, but I don't think it matters really. So yeah, I played with this gun all day this past weekend, shot two cases of paint, and it shot good. It wasn't like awesome, there's no like a revelation, I didn't like collapse in like excitement. 
it just worked kind of like I expected. One thing I've noticed with these Mac Dev guns, especially all the Clone 5s I've used, maybe you've used like four or five of those things, is they all kind of shot different. I don't know if that's the guns were necessarily shooting different or there's the people that owned them, just kind of tweaked them and maybe had them tuned a little bit different. But I've shot ones that were really smooth and really quiet, and then ones that were kind of like loud and definitely more kicky than I would have expected. And after playing with the Prime, I'd say the Prime's kind of in the middle right there. I mean, I've been playing with the LV 1.5 for the past like month and a half, and there is no question the LV 1.5 is quieter, kicks less, uh, and it's just smoother shooting than the Prime that I used. But that's not to say that the Prime was like super loud and kicked a lot. It just wasn't as smooth as like my LV 1.5 or like the CS1. Uh, or like a Lux or the M2s that I've used. The only issue I had was one time I did have some first shot drop off. First shot drop off, for those of you guys who don't know, is just what it sounds like, really, that first shot drops off. So you take one shot and the velocity is like 100, and then the next one will be higher, hopefully. Sometimes you get like first shot drop off, second shot, third shot, fourth shot, and then it like just continually gets better. At least with the Prime, in my case, I got one shot and it was like 100 feet per second, and then the next one was like back to 280 and was all good again. I kind of did this on purpose. I let that gun sit for about 45 minutes with air in it. Most of the time, first shot drop off is happening when guns sit for a long time. Like say you leave air in a gun for an hour and then go over to shoot it. Sometimes these spool valve guns will experience first shot drop off. And MacDev's Clone 5 was kind of notorious for that. Some guys have a lot of issues with first shot drop off, but I don't really know if that's a problem because it doesn't really matter. Like I'm not leaving my gun aired up for an hour. I'm typically like playing and then taking the air off. And when I go back to play, turning the air back on and not having an issue. So it only had that problem one time when I was like trying to make it happen. But for me, if the gun sits for an hour and then I get that one single shot has drop off, eh, it's not that big of a deal. The Prime is also coming with MacDev's Shift 2 Barrel Kit. MacDev have been using the Shift 2 Barrel Kits for quite a while. They came with the Cyborg 6 and the Clone 5s. They're a three piece barrel, so you get a barrel back, barrel tip, and insert. That insert goes in the barrel back, barrel tip goes on, and barrel. I like the shift kits, they're good. I mean, they're barrels. If you watch this channel often, you know that I'm not like crazy hype on the barrel train. So <sighs> barrels are barrels to me. Typically use good paintballs, guns shoot straight. One thing I don't like about the MacDev guns, and the Prime's no exception to that, is the way they sound. They have this weird like tingy, like pingy noise when they shoot. So the shooting video I did that you can find right up there, it doesn't really show up in that video. It just sounds like it's shooting. You might be able to hear it slightly, but it's not really there. But it's just like a ting, ting, ting. I mean, it's not that bad, I'm obviously exaggerating. But there's a definite ting or ping in comparison to pretty much all other paintball guns. Doesn't matter where you got a G-Tech or like a M2 or like a Tipman 98, the MacDev guns just ping and pong. I don't know, it's weird. The Prime is also coming with MacDev's new Infinity Drive chain bolt system. The Infinity Drive works at the very low 100 PSI, is super easy to take apart, and then there's only a few O rings that actually need greasing or like regular maintenance. MacDev are also claiming that the Infinity Drive is on par with other high end spool valve guns as far as reliability goes, but it's kind of hard for me to test that right. Like I said, I only shot about two cases of paint with it. I think to get a real reliability test, we need to get about like 30 to like 40,000 shots on a gun to see how how reliable it actually was. But when I was using it, I really only had that one first shot drop off issue and I kind of like forced it, but didn't have any velocity problems. Like the velocity was consistent all the time, shot perfect. I uh, didn't have any issues with it, but again, only like 4,000 shots. So while it could be more reliable, it's not like the previous spool valve gun, the Clone 5, was unreliable. So maybe the little tweaks they've done with that Infinity Drive and new solenoid maybe improve reliability a little bit. So maybe it's a little bit more reliable, but it wasn't really a problem before. One thing I really like about the Prime is how easy it is to take the trigger frame off. It's really only two screws and the frame just pops right off. So the Prime has two boards. There's a main board in the trigger frame and then an upper eye board. The two boards make contact with each other with the spring pins. So so essentially you have on the lower board a little pin that pops up and then that upper board has, I don't know, like a surface like this and then you put them together and it makes contact and then you got like circuit flowing electricity thing. It just makes it easier to take stuff apart. I know they're not the only company to do this. Empire has the Vanquish and then Planet Eclipse, the CS1, both kind of do something similar. Both of those guns take a quite a bit longer and are a little bit more difficult to like remove the entire frame than the Prime is. 
So it just makes it easier if you get like paint in there or like need to clean eyes or you know, something like that. It just makes it a lot easier and quicker. So this is the like conclusion part of this, whether I say it's worth it, if it's not worth it, just my like overall thoughts on the Prime. My main problem with Mac Dev is their guns don't feel like they're worth the price that they're asking. And that Prime is no exception to that. The Prime's a $1,400 paintball gun and it just doesn't seem like it's worth $1,400. The guns from like DLX, Field One, Empire, Planet Eclipse, or die just kind of like feel better. They just feel like better products. They just feel more premium. Like the anodizing feels better, the finish feels better, the materials feel better. They just feel like better put together products. And when I'm paying that $1,400 for a paintball gun, I want it to feel like it's premium. But there's no single thing that I can like point out on the Mac Dev guns that like make them feel cheaper. I kind of feel like it's a combination of things. It's the cuts on the body, the finish on the body, the anodizing kind of just rolls all together and then just doesn't make the gun feel as nice. Bad? I think it's just the price. I think $1,400 is just too much money. If they could come in at like $900 and compete with the Shocker XLS or like the GTEC 160R, I think that that would be a very fair comparison. You could argue that the Shocker XLS is better or the Prime is better or like the 160R, the Prime, or either way, but I don't think you can at that $1,400 price. There's just no reason for you to go out and buy the Prime over like a CS 1.5 or an LV 1.5 or a Lux Ice or an M2 or whatever it is. Those guns are just better. And at this point you can buy an LV 1.5 for $400 less and an M2 for $400 less. I really want these smaller companies to do better. I want Mac Dev guns to be awesome. I want to be able to tell you guys this is the best paintball gun you can buy at $1,400, but it's simply not. It's just not worth $1,400. It's worth $800, $900, but not $14. Guys, that's the Mac Dev Prime review. If you have a question about the Prime, do leave a comment below or check out the shooting video right there. Maybe check out another review by hitting that box right there.